I only recently discovered that there's actually a pile of, well, not just a pile, but numerous piles of nuclear waste in Australia. And it's a little bit alarming when you consider what's being done with it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back. Australia's nuclear waste. Now, we don't even have any nuclear power plants here, but we somehow get other countries' nuclear waste. It's become a way of um, sort of a business of sorts to dump nuclear waste in Australia. Now, Victoria, which is a state verging on bankruptcy, we did have the Commonwealth Games, which is sort of like a smaller version of the Olympic Games, but the state can't afford to run those games, so it's cancelled them, and it's turning to nuclear waste storage. However, the courts said, uh, yeah, no, 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 we're not going to drag you out of bankruptcy by letting you dump nuclear waste in Victoria. Now, of all the places in Australia, Victoria seems probably the least likely place to store it. It has a massive population, nearly as much as Sydney or New South Wales, and it's a fraction of the size. More than 20 tonnes of reprocessed nuclear fuel will stay at Australia's only reactor in southern Sydney, while nuclear waste will remain scattered in cupboards and filing cabinets across the country after the federal court blocked plans for a long-term storage site in outback South Australia. The site in Kimber was selected more than 40 years after Australia started planning for a centralised repository. In other words, a fancy way of saying a nuclear dump. This month, the decision was quashed by the courts. Now, apparently, both South Australia and Victoria have tried to uh, create their own nuclear dumps, and both of them have been refused by the courts in Australia. What does this mean? Well, there's no live national facility option and the waste pile is apparently growing, says media. Successive governments and agencies have said there are more than 100 sites across Australia that are storing nuclear waste littered across the land, in hospital basements and universities, on defence and mining sites, and in research laboratories. I mean, I had no idea that there was more than 100 places in Australia, that if I went to, um, well, I'd be in a bit of trouble. Now, you know, being realistic here, it does seem a little bit alarming that nuclear waste is scattered all over Australia. There's no definitive list, apparently, because of a licensing split between the federal and state governments. But the vast majority is produced and stored at the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, which is in Lucas Heights. A national inventory published last year found Australia's 2,061 cubic metres of intermediate level waste, which is called ILW, will more than double to 4,377 cubic metres in the next 50 years. Now, that's a lot of uh, basically nuclear waste. Where is it all going to go? Well, no one seems to actually know the answer. ILW is generated from the production of nuclear medicine, including from the reactor in Sydney, and needs purpose-built containers with shielding. The inventory predicted that the 2,490 cubic metres of low-level waste will more than quadruple to 13,287 within the next five decades. That's a big difference. LLW includes gloves, paper, gowns, and other stuff basically used in nuclear medicine. Much of it can be left to, del to delay and decay and can be disposed of as regular rubbish. However, Anstos waste makes up about 93% of the LLW and about 96.5% of the ILW. Ansto is responsible for the spent fuel rods from its Opal Research Reactor in Sydney South, which are sent to France, the UK or the US for reprocessing. Last year, the UK shipped two tonnes of ILW to be stored at Sydney's Lucas Heights facility until it could be transported to a national facility. It was part of a waste swap deal. It was part of a waste swap deal after Australia sent fuel rods over to the UK to be recycled. In 2015, 25 tonnes of radioactive waste from France was sent to Australia after being reprocessed. 
That too will be housed at Lucas Heights until a dump is selected and built. At this point, no one knows where it's going to go. No one really wants it. Since then, Australia has sent more fuel rods to France to have the uranium and plutonium extracted, but their return has not yet been announced. It's not clear when that will happen, with such details that Kimber option is off the table. Basically, it was proposed it would go somewhere, and now that place doesn't want it. Now they're saying, well, we don't know where it's going to go. It's coming back to Australia. No one knows what we'll do with it. The current government policy is to build a national radioactive waste management facility to dispose of this waste permanently and temporarily for some of it while a permanent dump is built. The traditional owners of the land around Kimba, the indigenous people, took the government to court and basically the indigenous people said, no, no, we don't want it. Uh, and they had to take the government to court and the government lost. Now the process is on hold as the government considers the judgment and as the case continues with final details to be ironed out. Top nuclear waste expert, emeritus professor Ian Lowe, says waste is kept in cupboards and filing cabinets in universities and hospitals. Um, yeah, not sure I'd want to be anywhere around that stuff. When I was in the Department of Applied Physics at the University of New South Wales, the used sources that had come to the end of their useful life were just locked in a cupboard, he said. When calling for a national storage site, politicians have variously said the waste is kept in filing cabinets, shipping containers, under stairs, and in basements. I don't know if this is true, but if it is, it seems a bit weird. It's clearly not optimal, he said. The reason it hasn't been a problem is there's not actually anything very nasty you can do with low-level waste. It's not very radioactive, said Lowe. Ansto says such waste needs minimal shielding, while some major hospitals use delay tanks and other facilities use drums. So, Lowe says, finding a national waste depository is not urgent because it's been stored this way for 60 years. The only thing is, if that waste pulse builds up enough, Maybe that low-level radiation becomes a bit more than low-level, possibly. Lowe, who is from Griffith University, says it's not clear if centralizing the waste is even a good option. He says there's an implicit risk in transporting the waste from the various sites to a new site, and there should be a safety comparison with leaving it where it is. I haven't even seen a crude back-of-the-envelope calculation, he says. With the intermediate level waste, which is much nastier stuff, he says he couldn't see the point of moving it from temporary storage at Lucas Heights to temporary storage at Kimba while we work out a permanent solution. So, like I said, no one knows what to do with this stuff, and actually it's pretty bad. The Australian Conservation Foundation, ACF, and the Greens are pushing for it to remain at Lucas Heights. They want nothing to do with it. The ACF's Dave Sweeney says the waste at Lucas Heights is secure and that keeping it there could be a circuit breaker after years of political wrangling. He accepts that Lucas Heights is not set up to permanently dispose of the waste, but he points out that the Australian Radioactive Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency has said it is safe there. And, he says, much of this waste currently is being managed in hospitals was never going to get to Kimber anyway. On top of all of that, Kimber was only ever going to hold waste temporarily until a permanent facility was built. We need to take a breath and get very serious, systematic, and credible about how we advance radioactive waste management, he said. This shows the need for and clear ability to deliver a circuit breaker and inject some responsibility, credibility, and respect into this process. The government said it would be inappropriate to comment on the future of this waste while the Baum Gala case is still before the court. The government has lodged a submission to the federal court and it could appeal the decision. Ansto says it is international best practice to have a single facility and that Lucas Heights is not the appropriate place, basically within a residential location to some degree, for it to be held. It says the Ansto campus is simply not big enough and that it will be full in 15 years anyway. Lowe says only Finland and Sweden managed to solve the issue with long-term waste storage, and they did it by finding communities who are keen to have the waste in return for investment. In other words, poor locations who were willing to basically uh, store a bunch of nuclear waste in order to get some money, possibly to help their communities. 
He says permanent disposal of all types of waste will need somewhere geologically stable. It can't be in an area where anything like an earthquake or a volcano or even something like strong winds could be located. That probably means remote parts of South Australia, West Australia, or the Northern Territory. In other words, somewhere out in the desert where nobody goes. The point is finding a community that's happy to have it there. So are you in a community that's happy to have some radioactive nuclear waste stored in exchange for cash? Please let me know in the comments or send me an email and I'll get in touch. We can organize a deal. Now I'm joking, of course. I wouldn't recommend you doing this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.